It was a cold and dreary morning as I sat in the bleak prison cell, my heart heavy with guilt. The realization of what I had done gnawed at my soul, tearing me apart from within. I wish I could backtrack the hands of time. Maybe there would have been a better way out. I was permitted to speak to a priest lastly before my execution. But of what need is it? I would rather talk to the man from whose loins I came into existence. I chose to confide in my father. He has been a pillar of strength, a beacon of hope in the darkest of times for me. If anyone could understand the twisted circumstances that had led me down this treacherous path, it was him. As I sat across from my father in the cold visiting room, the weight of my heart hung in the air like an invisible shroud. His weary eyes met mine, filled with a mixture of sorrow and concern. Sonia, my child, he began softly, his voice trembling with emotion. Tell me everything. Leave no detail unspoken. And so, with a heavy heart, I began to weave the tale of my marriage experience, which has grown from a beautiful love life to one filled with regrets and sorrow. It all started months ago when we parked in our new mansion two days before my husband's birthday. We were so happy and decided to celebrate the day in a grand style. It was a grand party, inviting all our closest friends and family. The evening was filled with laughter, music, and joy as we danced under the twinkling lights, oblivious to the darkness that would soon descend upon our lives. As the night wore on, a stranger arrived at our doorstep, a man with a sinister aura that sent shivers down my spine. His name was Vic, and he claimed to be an old friend of my husband, Daniel. There was something about him that I couldn't quite put my finger on, something unsettling. Vic's presence cast an eerie shadow over the festivities. He seemed to take a particular interest in me, his eyes piercing through my soul as if he knew something I didn't. Despite my unease, Daniel welcomed him warmly, oblivious to the danger that lurked beneath Vic's facade. Days turned into weeks, and Vic's visits became more frequent. He would engage in long conversations with Daniel, their hushed whispers permeating the walls of our once happy home. It didn't take long for my suspicions to grow, and with each passing day, I became more convinced that something sinister was afoot. One fateful evening, unable to contain my fears any longer, I confronted Daniel about his relationship with Vic. His eyes darted nervously, betraying a guilty conscience. But he claims to be fine. That evening, he was invited by the police, which he obliged without delay. But how was I to know he would be locked up? Dan has been falsely accused of a crime he didn't commit. He was framed for embezzlement by this cunning individual seeking to destroy his reputation and our lives. Consumed by the desire for justice, I embarked on a treacherous journey to uncover the truth and clear my husband's name. In my desperation, I received a call from a man who introduced himself as the Whisperer. I sought the help of this shady character lurking in the depths of the city's underbelly. This individual promised me access to classified information that could expose the real culprits behind Dan's wrongful accusation. Little did I know the dark path I was about to tread. Under the cover of the night, I met with this mysterious man. He claimed to possess evidence that could turn the tide in our favor. The whisperer led me down a dimly lit alley, his voice a constant whisper in my ear, urging me to trust him. With trembling hands, I handed over a substantial amount of money in exchange for the evidence. As I examined the papers, a chilling realization washed over me. Dan's boss has been the mastermind behind his arrest. They have been dirty all this while, covering up in the name of real estate's investors, with the evidence at hand. I approached my husband in police custody. He admitted but instructed me not to present the evidence to the authority, but to contact Vic who will guide me on what to do. Faced with the unbearable weight of guilt and the fear of losing everything, I made a fateful decision. I chose to go along with my husband's plan, believing that by playing his game, I will save him and salvage some semblance of a future for us. It was a choice driven by desperation and the misguided hope that we could outsmart the devil himself. The following night I sought to meet Vic in the club where he had accepted to see me. He asked for a dance, and at first I declined, but he reminded me that I have no choice here, if I want my man out of the police net. I obliged his request, the way he caressed me. I felt like kicking him in his balls, but I endured. When he was satisfied, he demanded we go somewhere private and talk. Driving down, I tried to speak, but he shushed me. 
In the silence, I couldn't stop, but wondered where we were going. Till we reach a duplex in a private estate, I was instructed to drop my cell phone to the security at the gate. When we got into a room that seemed like an office, he handed me some documents to sign. It states that all my husband and I ever owned is willed to a group with the name Alliance, which I did, without questioning him. The man in the security post was called to take the document. I had the man drive off immediately with the same car we returned with. I believe I'm done here. Come take me home, I gently said. He replied that we have to wait for the security to return, for that's the only vehicle in the building. He offered me a glass of whiskey, which I declined. So he gave me chilled bottled water, and I accepted because it's been a long night. He asked to be excused to take his bath. A few moments after, I felt dizzy. I noticed the water had been spiked, but was too weak to fight it. When I woke up the following morning, I found myself stacked naked in his bed. The bastard had his way and disappeared. A part of me died that morning. The security man took me home. I went straight to the bathroom to take my bath. His aura could not be washed off. My cry attracted the attention of my daughter. They have been through lots already in the absence of their father. So I comforted myself. Later that morning, Vic came to evict us from the house with another man he introduced as an attorney. The attorney informed me that my husband is free and will be with us shortly. At that moment, he called and yes, I confirmed it. My heart was consoled. Vic went in and served himself a glass of whiskey. I asked my kids to pack up their clothes. We will be moving out of the house as soon as daddy arrives. I went into the kitchen to hide my shame. There the devil came again, with pictures of me on his bed. He threatened to post it on the internet if I don't succumb to his desires whenever he pleases. As he was walking out of the kitchen, he whispered, I will call you. That was the last word he ever said, as I struck him with a knife in the back. His scream attracted the attorney he came with. But before he could get here, I stuck twice again to ensure he is lifeless. My husband arrived to meet the scene, but it was a bit too late, for the attorney had called the police. I was arrested, and here we are. Tears streamed down my face, and I could feel the weight of my father's disappointment crushing my spirit. He listened in silence, his face a mixture of anguish and compassion. He reached across the table and gently took my hands in his. The touch of his weathered palms brought a sense of fleeting comfort amidst the overwhelming despair. At that moment, I saw forgiveness in his eyes, a glimmer of love and understanding that transcended the abyss I had fallen into. Sonia, he whispered, his voice filled with a blend of sorrow and compassion. I cannot blame you for the choices you have made, nor can I deny the pain they have caused. But you are my daughter, and my love for you runs deeper than any betrayal. Has your husband got to know the truth, your reason for your action? Of what use is it that will only add to his pain? His question pierced my heart, stirring a flicker of hope within me. Could there truly be a chance for redemption? No, I don't think so. The warder walked in. His voice left my father in uncontrollable tears. I hugged him and walk away with the warder. As I walked towards the execution chamber, my heart heavy with both sorrow and gratitude, I found solace in the knowledge that my husband is free and there to take care of our two children. As I faced my fate with a mixture of regret and acceptance, I hoped that my story would serve as a cautionary tale, a reminder of the destructive power of manipulation and the enduring strength of love and forgiveness. And as the shadows closed in around me, I whispered a final prayer, into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit.